announcements. Um, Arden wanted me to pass on that he got two very nice notes from Elena Hurst and Hannah Corneli, who spoke to us, I want to say, two, two weeks ago. And actually, I think they're speaking to us again in a different group two weeks from now. So H2O is going to be here in a couple weeks. And then next week, uh, Dr. Colin Jones from the Human Performance Center is our, our speaker. So I'd like for you to uh, welcome him uh, next week. Do we have a handshake dollar mark? Yes. Oh, you got it. Yeah. So uh, I decided it was going to be the last person that shook my hand, and that was uh, Troy. No. Oh, oh man. Party. Richard's not here for a fundraising update, so what about guests? I got one. Uh, oh, you're, you're on cue, Steve. Here we go. <laughs> Chris Ray, uh, he's our local OSBI. He's been with OSBI about four years. Four years, he's a retired dumping officer. He's living in the area. Okay, welcome. <laughs> Today, our program, um, I'm very excited to have Kimberly Weiss here. Most of you probably don't realize this, but Kimberly and I are non-biological brother and sister. Uh, Donovan Reichenberger is kind of our adopted parent, and so she and I trade uh, taking care of him, but Kimberly and Weiss and I are very close, and so uh, I appreciate her very much, but she's going to talk about the things going on in the finance department, and I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised and excited. Uh, two of our programs... Um, well, actually, I want to speak to that. There's the arts department that is doing amazing things, and I see this all the time. And then two programs that are really growing well is our band and our choir. And I know Kimberly's going to tell us a lot more about that. So please welcome Kimberly Weiss. Good afternoon. Uh, I don't think I need to stand behind that. Uh, I'm loud enough as it is. Uh, my name is Kimberly Wiest and I have the opportunity of working uh, at Northwestern as the Chair of Fine Arts Department with some fabulous people. Uh, what I also do as one of the positions is I am the Director or uh, Assistant Director of the Northwest Oklahoma Concert Series, which you hear many times Pat and I and others in the group saying, you know, get your contributor packets. Um, I would like to show you the next group coming in, which is Link Union, and they are coming because Elizabeth Ritchie uh, asked me last year to look into them. They're fabulous, and I think you might be interested in saying, okay, that Tuesday night on, the, on November the 29th, uh, we're going to go and see this group. So I'll show you a little blurb about them, and then um, while that's going on, if it didn't go to sleep too much, it's right there. So some guy sitting out there with these grand kids with him. It went, it went to sleep on me and then it froze up. Um, Northwest Oklahoma Concert Series is supported by the Oklahoma Arts Endowment, the United, the Federal Arts Endowment, uh, and many other programs. Somebody asked me how much money we need to raise, and <clears throat> this year due to uh, loans and or grants that weren't all accepted uh, and the decline in the arts money in the state of Oklahoma, we only got about $7,000. And so we have to raise over 75% of what it costs to bring in the concert, uh, to bring in the concert series. We do that through contributor tickets as well as large donations from many people in the, in some of you in this room, uh, various banks as well as uh, share trust and holder drug and community bank, um, <clears throat> the uh, bank central, many others, you know, donate money to us for that. This is our lineup. Did everybody get a lineup uh, for this year? We've already had one event. It was um, <clears throat> extremely uh, fun and they're called Ball in the House, an acapella group. Link Union will be coming on November 29th and uh, we're really excited about this group. I think a lot of people are gonna, going to enjoy them. In March, March the 8th, we have the Enid Symphony, and they will be performing, and then the Northwestern Chorale will join them uh, doing part of the concert. It's not the whole concert, but it's the Enid Symphony, and the Enid Symphony has been requested on our list for a long time. We want a symphony, well, we want a symphony. So this year we're bringing in a symphony. And then the group in uh, April, very late in the semester, 
uh, but it's again, it's because of all the other things that go on in Herod Hall that we have to uh, work around. It's a group called Belladonna. They are, they, they call themselves a classical folk group and basically it's acoustical music and they're extremely um, mellow but very um, engaging and I've enjoyed speaking uh, uh, to their agent, but I haven't spoken to them personally yet. Anyway, that one should be a very good concert as well. Um, three of the four, I have two of the four of them uh, have masters in classical guitar. So it will be interesting to see exactly. Is that up there? Okay, good. thank you, Kyle. And if I, oh, oh go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. All kinds of stuff. Running bear, love little white dove, with a love as big as the sky. Running bear, love little white dove, with a love that will end Oh, running bear. He never went down to Georgia, he was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind, cause he's way behind, he was willing to make a deal. When he came across this young man saw him fiddle and playing a hot, well the devil jumped up on a hickory stump and said, Oh, let me tell you what. Angeline, I know I should have married Angeline 20 some odd years ago. Angelina Baker, Angeline, I know I should have married Angeline 20 some odd years ago. Well, Mom started on the front pew at church when she was this high. She started us when we were this high, too, so. She also kicks, cooks our food. <laughs> <laughs> she kicks our food around. I gotta get done.
anyway, you see what we're what we're looking forward to. They will um, going to they're going to do part of the concert, um, what you saw, and then part of the cross concert Christmas music. And so I think that's going to be really, really fun and really nice, kind of kick off the Christmas season. Uh, anyway, we hope that you will come out. Individual ticket prices are fifteen dollars for adults, and we would love to. And students with ID, it's it's five dollars. So we'd love to have you guys come. We are trying something different. Hopefully, that we'll get some more college students to attend. We're giving some free tickets away through full-time faculty this next week, and so hopefully there will be a, a few more students maybe show up. They, they oftentimes don't know what's going on uh, or what they're missing out on, uh, the students do. And so we're hoping that they will at least come out for this one and drag them into some other concerts, concert series. Please come uh, on the 29th and we'd love to have you also, of course, come to the Enid Symphony as well as to see Belladonna in, um, in April. Um, Concert series is, uh, we believe, very important to the life of Alva in Northwestern Oklahoma. And so bringing in these professional groups, uh, and we've had people from all over the world come in and perform, um, and we're hope hopefully going to get to continue that uh, over the next years, but obviously we're constantly battling, trying to raise enough money to bring in acts that we think our audiences would enjoy as, enjoy as well as what we can afford. And so sometimes it's a challenge, but we're, we're trying as hard as possible. Now, on the fine arts side, we have four areas in the Northwestern fine arts, visual arts, instrumental music, choral music, and then the theater. And um, not to bore you, but I've asked two, I've asked all four of the areas to come today, and the choral department uh, has rehearsal every Wednesday at noon, and there was no way there, because they have a huge, I'm gonna give a plug, if you're not busy next Monday night at 6 p.m., uh, we, let me back up. If you're not busy this Saturday at two, we would love to have you come to the annual children's show. Starting at 10 a.m. in the morning, we, have, we will be doing four shows for children in Northwest Oklahoma and Southwest Kansas. We have a group coming many years now, all the way from Port Supply. We have a group coming in from Goodwill. Um, we have 11 schools coming at this writing, at this uh, speaking, and we have over 1,560 that we know of for sure. They're gonna show up in the next four shows. Two, two on Thursday and two on Friday, and then our general show is uh, Saturday at two. So we build the set, strike that set, tear that down Saturday afternoon, and at six o'clock Saturday night, we're, we will be uh, setting up for 150 voice, <coughs> high school and Northwestern Chorale holiday choir festival. We have schools coming in from Ponca, um, just everywhere, there's, a, there's about eight different high schools coming in. We're bringing in a guest artist, uh, flying him in, a professional that's got a, a long reputation that's working with Mr. Longhurst. And those students will work all day learning music and then they will perform it at six o'clock, Monday night, it's free, in Herod Hall. So if you wanna stop by and see 150, 160 voice choir, uh, please, please stop by. Uh, we're hoping that this was, was this is our first year. We are sure hoping that this will be an annual event. Um, that's that's what we're hoping to do, and so we'll strike those people quickly on Monday night because when we get back from Thanksgiving, I've got these guys, and you notice those lights. We don't have those fancy schmancy lights, but I still have a writer that have to do as much of that as I can, with because they have specific requests. And so uh, we'll tear that down, they'll leave. We'll set up then for our annual uh, holiday gala. And that is on December the 10th at seven o'clock Saturday night where all the bands and all the, uh, all the Northwestern bands and all the Northwestern choirs uh, will sing Christmas music and some non-Christmas music, but mostly Christmas music. And then we, that's our tradition. We light the annual Northwestern Christmas tree after that uh, event. So. 
not that I expect you to remember all that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got some cards here. And this is this is, it mentions as many of the events as I could get on. There's a front and a back, so it goes all the way into April. Okay? The North the concert series isn't on there, that's the other card. But these are events that are happening with the theater and in the theater and also in other places on campus with the theater, with visual arts, with instrumental, as well as choral program. So I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Mark Decker and he is the head of the instrumental program here at Northwestern and he's gonna to have to step out quickly. Do you want one of those, Matt? All right, uh, he's gonna to have to step out because we have two seniors that are, will soon be doing their senior recital and today's preview day. And today is where, whether they get to do their senior recital or not, the music <laughs> faculty, the music faculty go, yeah, or yes. And so I'm going to let Mark speak first and then we'll go from there. Well, thank you very much. Well, as you can tell by the card, we're a very busy department. There's something uh, almost every week going on. There's either a senior recital, some night weekends, there's two senior recitals. Um, you're, of course, welcome to come to any of those. The events for choral and instrumental music, hi. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're all free to attend, so there's no charge at the door if you come to those concerts. The Holiday Gala is the same way on December the 10th. There's no charge uh, for those events. So we'd love to have you there uh, and support our students and our programs. Uh, this was a very good fall for the bands, just to give you a little highlight of how the uh, semester went. Uh, two years ago, to put everything in perspective, the band had about 15 in it two yes. years ago. Yes. Last year we had 25 in the band that we fielded for the marching band, and that was really good last year, and I was very happy with those numbers and the uh, increased involvement that we had. This last year there were 44 in the marching band, so our numbers are continuing to grow, and I do foresee that growth continuing to happen over the next few years. Um, so long as we can continue to get out into the schools and recruit, and that's something that Kimberly and Kyle and uh, um, Carson and I do on a regular basis, we're always out recruiting. So it was a very good fall. We marched three different marching shows. We hosted a mass band that had about 840 high school students in it, give or take. That was at homecoming. And then we brought in about 18 marching bands to uh, the homecoming uh, parade. So if you watch the homecoming parade, you probably saw quite a number. Uh, so it was a very good fall for us, and now we are switching gears, and we're going indoors, and we're learning how to play soft, and we're preparing for the <laughs> holiday concert right now. So that's what we're doing right now. And then, um, again, that's December 10th. In the spring, we have plans for two big programs that we'll put on. Uh, for one of them, I plan to bring Max uh, Ridgeway in to do a solo with the band. That's probably going to be our first one, but I, I can't guarantee it. It might be our second one, but that's going to be a, one of our programs will feature him as an artist. So that's what, where we're going, and um, there's a good vibe in the department with music, and I know there is with theater and art as well, uh, but recruiting's been going very well for us, so the choir and the bands have been growing. Uh, and if you're interested in supporting us, come to our concerts, they're free. Uh, you have the dates now, so we'd love to see you there. Uh, that just means the world to our students to see more people in the audience. So thank you. And introduce, this is Kyle Larson, the head of our visual arts department. Um, also, I should say that both Mark and Kyle, this is only their second year, and as well as Karsten Longhurst is the choral person. So we were all kind of finding how we were going to work last year, and we're really, I think, uh, moving really well now. Uh, hopefully the wheel is moving faster and we are making a lot of progress. Uh, Kyle was with us for some time with Jave, uh, who was our visual art person before and he was one of our artists in residence he loved us so much that when jake decided he was moving kyle thought i'll apply and we are thrilled to have carl kyle larson and uh, kyle's you just need to see his artwork it is amazing um and he has a really really good re good rapport with the students um they're growing their the classes are getting larger <coughs> More, more students are wanting to try to figure out how to take visual arts, which is sometimes hard because they also have to be in chemistry lab or computer science lab or somewhere else, so it's a challenge, but we're working that out. Um, and anyway, I'll shut up. And Kyle, this is, a, this is Kyle Larson, the head of the visual arts program. All right. Uh, I think I spoke to you last year, uh, around March or so, I brought uh, Roya and me, who was an artist in resident at the time, and uh, we shared slides with you all. Um, but first, I, I want to say how great it is to be a part of this fine arts department. 
Kimberly Weist here, the hardest working person on campus. She works tirelessly for uh, the students in our department and supports us. And we all work together great as a team. Uh, we share a lot of students. Uh, we try to be as flexible uh, with our scheduling so we don't have conflicts. And um, it really works out well. So I'm really thankful to be a part of this team. Um, the visual arts department, um, I think I mentioned last time when I was here, when I started and when I was a resident, the classes were about uh, one to five students per class. Now we're, we're getting to about uh, eight to 12 students per class. Uh, it's growing. There's a real thirst for visual arts on campus. And I keep discovering more and more <coughs> students who want to take our classes. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, our art department is not in the Fine Arts Building, it's in Jesse Dunn in the Art Annex, which is really between the second and third floor. So it's very, very easy to miss. If you're not going there with a purpose, you probably will get lost. It's like an M.C. Escher uh, drawing, stairs everywhere. It, it makes it difficult for students to bring their work up there, but it works, and, and it's a great space. Um, but uh, I, I have an open door policy with them. If I'm not in my office, I'm in my studio working on my own paintings. I think that's important for students to see work ethic. Um, and I leave the studio, the main classroom open for students to work into the night on their projects. It's, it's important for them to have a space where they can make a mess, a reasonable mess at least, <laughs> uh, in the studio. You know, it, it's hard to make artwork in a dorm room. So uh, I'm really thankful we have nice big classrooms for them to work in. And you know, more and more I'm seeing students work late into the night on their artwork. We've got a Mac lab where they're, they're doing a design. Um, it's, it's really becoming a community and that's what I wanted when I started, to have a community of artists. And that's supported again with theater, band, choir. Um, they're getting a well-rounded education here. They're learning a lot. So. I'm really thankful. Um, and we also have, again, the Artists in Residence program, which is, I think, essential to what I do and to expose, exposing students to other forms of artwork that I don't necessarily do. Um, and, you know, people with different points of views, people from different parts of the country or even the world. And we're lucky enough right now to have uh, an artist, Ana Valdez. She's a painter. Um, we're both from Sacramento, but we didn't know each other in Sacramento. <laughs> we never met there. Um, we met at Boston University. Uh, Anna was in the class below me. Um, and uh, even then, I, I was amazed by her work ethic. And boy, is she showing students what hard work is. In the week she's been here, and I welcome you guys all to visit Anna's studio, and, and she does too, um, to see her paintings in progress. In the week she's been here, she's stretched and created uh, about from, uh, 10 stretcher bars, different sizes. Um, she's already finished a, a large scale five by six painting uh, and lots and lots of prints. It, I mean, she's building a whole environment in her studio and the students are, are uh, really amazed and I think they're getting it a lot. And now, in addition to working in her studio, Anna helps out with the classes and provides feedback to the students. Uh, Anna is also a great uh, graphic designer and digital illustrator, so she's been really helping out with that. Um, yeah. Would you like to say a few things? <laughs> <laughs> Not to put your hands Well, I mean, I've been really enjoying my time here and working with the students and with Kyle, and it's a great perspective to have. And I mean, the great part about an artist in residence is getting out of your environment and going to another one and engaging and having that um, response and being able to give feedback. And I mean, it's, it's just been great. And Kyle's been super accommodating and the students have been, I'm very impressed by them as well. They, they work really hard and Kyle's just, he's always available. So I'm learning a lot about teaching through Kyle as well so but if any of you are interested in what's going on with the artist in residence i'd be ha happy to show you what i'm working on and um creating a dialogue so thank you for welcoming me <laughs> and i recommend seeing the work now and then seeing where it is in a couple of weeks yeah. too because we'll see the progress yeah we have our show on december december 2nd, 2nd yeah. uh, for the first friday art walk uh, six to eight at the graceful arts center on will be showing her uh, her paintings that she did here. And we might be doing a workshop the yeah. following day. The like following day, um, on the 3rd, 
and I believe it's it's uh, kind of a themed day in downtown um, yeah. Christmas in Elba. Um, Since I'm a still life painter, I wanted to set up a Christmas tree environment so people can paint and draw from a Christmas cool. theme setting. <laughs> Yeah. So that'll be at 11 o'clock Saturday, yep. December 3rd, uh, and you all are welcome to come. It's going to be fun. But anyway, thanks for uh, listening, and uh, I encourage you to come out first Friday Art Walks. We always have something going on. Uh, and then visit the studios. You can see the students' work in progress. It's a, I, I call it a nice mess. You don't want <laughs> an art studio that's too clean, uh, that something's up. If it's too clean, it's it's a nice mess right now. So come up and visit. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much for your time. Does anybody have any questions? No. We would just encourage you to come and come out and support the various mm -hmm. art programs that Northwestern provides so readily. I've got one question. Yes, sir. Probably I'm the only one here who doesn't know that. But what is between the second and third floor? It's one hallway, and it's them. Okay. It's really kind. Of, it's the strangest building. In Jesse Dunn, you have to go up to go down, truthfully, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, they kind of put breadcrumbs if you're going to the art building. <laughs> 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 and the so rooms are numbered like the third floor. Yeah, three right. Floor. Which it's it's numbered as the third floor, but it's really not. It's really yeah. two, it's and like a two and a half. Two and a half yeah. floor. <laughs> it's a strange building, but y'all are welcome to come. <laughs> So you thank you for your time. You know, thank you, you for having me. first year to figure out where things are. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kimberly. Thank Please you. give them a round of applause again. <laughs> We're probably going to forego the happy pop, but I want to say a couple things. Um, we have really realized recently, and I say we, I've been here almost 12 years on the university staff, and realized that Northwestern is has a responsibility as a cultural center for this part of the state. And if you think back, you know, we used to have Tri-State was a big thing in Eden. That doesn't exist anymore when Phillips went away. So our responsibility has, is, has grown. You don't see a lot of fine arts in the schools anymore. So the only time they see that is up here. So I, the neat thing now is we have some incredibly quality people that are in those departments doing the right things and recruiting these kids. So thank you for what you're doing. And we're, we've had some investments from very generous donors and we're gonna be looking for some more to, to really build this program to be what it is or what it could be for our, our area. So uh, thank you all for your work and your hard efforts. Yeah, Kimberly's here about any time of the day <laughs> I'm working on something. So that whole entire uh, fine arts has never been better than it is right now, personnel wise. And I've been here for 12 years now. So thanks again for what you're doing. Thank you, thank you all. Um, next week, as I said, Dr. Collins, uh, Colin Jones will be here. I think you want to hear what he has to say. Have a great day and uh, happy Columbus. <laughs>